In typical Formula 1 fashion, Sauber, formerly Alfa Romeo, made us wait for their rebranding, but finally we know what their new name will be. If you were one of the people hoping for a name like Lamborghini or Bugatti to be returning to the grid, you're going to be bitterly disappointed. Sauber have managed to concoct one of the worst F1 team names we've seen in a long time, and today I'll tell you all about their new title sponsors and what we can expect from the team in 2024. I may as well rip the band-aid off straight away. Sauber has sold its chassis and team naming rights to existing sponsors for the next two Formula 1 seasons, as it waits to morph into the Audi Works team. The team's Kick Sauber C44 car name has been confirmed by the team, and the initial 2024 Formula 1 World Championship entry list names the team officially as Stake F1 Team Kick Sauber. Doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, does it? Personally, I'm excited to hear the commentary team attempt to say Stake F1 Team Kick Sauber at pace during an exciting on-track battle. In reality though, while Stake.com and Kick.com have bought the naming rights, the team will just be known as Sauber to you and me for the next couple of years. No one actually says Mercedes AMG Patronus F1 team or Aston Martin Aramco Cognizant F1 team or Money Graham Haas F1 team, do they? But who are Stake and Kick? And what do they bring to the table for Sauber? To be honest, in sporting terms, they don't offer a lot. Stake is an online cryptocurrency casino and bookmaker, while Kick is a streaming site similar to Twitch where people can broadcast themselves doing anything. I had a quick flick through the site while writing this script and it showed me the rapper Drake streaming himself playing Blackjack on Stake's website, clearly a paid-for cross-promotion, as well as a number of other online casino streams, a few people playing video games, and cam girls. The streaming platform Kick joined forces with Sauber as a major partner ahead of the 2023 season, with the ties between the two strengthened with Friday's announcement. Sauber Motorsports, who operated the Alfa Romeo F1 team from the start of 2019 up until the end of 2023, have been renamed for the next two years as the Swiss squad goes through a transitionary period, before the arrival of the Audi brand in 2026. Team principal Alessandro Aluni Bravi said, Sauber has always been about innovation, breaking the mold and defying convention. The partnership with Kick.com is the latest and boldest display of the philosophy that drives us. Kick.com is redefining the way live streaming is done, and they will adopt the same disruptive approach in the world of Formula 1. If anyone has actually used Kick on a regular basis, perhaps they could comment down below and let me know what actually makes it different from any of the other streaming sites out there, because I certainly couldn't work it out. Aluni Bravi finished. With Kick.com, our goal is to make the next step in finding new and innovative ways to get closer to our fans. Kick and Stake co-founder Bishan Tarani added, Kick.com has seen tremendous growth since its inception and is continuing to make waves in the streaming industry. Kick's content is fast-paced and engaging, like what we witness every Grand Prix weekend. Just like this partnership, Kick was essentially destined for the racetrack. We are thrilled to take our collaboration to an unparalleled magnitude, backed by our knowledge of the motorsport culture and our passion for cutting-edge technology. Exceptionally, this universally popular sport aligns perfectly with our product and what we're building at Kick.com. Bijan, along with his business partner Edward Craven, have been involved in their fair share of scandal recently. With Stake.com now worth over a billion dollars, a former business partner of the two, Christopher Freeman, claimed he had been shut out of the business and had been misled by the Australian-based entrepreneurs. The two founders of Stake.com and Kick managed to avoid a $580 million claim against their business after a US court threw out the claim for a lack of jurisdiction. Before I carry on, I want to let you know that over the Christmas holidays, we'll be releasing a three-hour video on the complete history of Formula One, or at least as complete a history as you can give in three hours. We'll highlight some of the best seasons, the craziest technical developments, and the stories of the most famous racing drivers of each decade. We're super excited to share it with you all, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it when it drops. While the two websites don't have anything to offer in sporting terms, they will be putting up a large amount of money to get the naming rights to the chassis and team for the next two seasons. The original Stake.com deal that got the brand name into the team name in 2023 was worth $100 million over three years, but that amount will definitely have increased with the introduction of the Kick brand into the name. The two brands will feature in the Sauber team name for the 2024 and 25 season in the interim period before German manufacturer Audi takes over the team. 
Audi is in the process of taking over Sauber before entering F1 as a manufacturer in 2026 with its own team and engine. It bought a minority stake in the team at the start of 2023 and is set to increase that to 50% and then 75% over the next year or so. Until Audi enters with their own engine, Sauber will continue to use Ferrari powertrains. So, what can we expect from the newly named Stake F1 Team Kick Sauber in 2024? Well, the people working on the team are still the same, it's just where the money is coming from for their wages that is changing. And that isn't necessarily a good thing. Valtteri Bottas conceded that the 2023 season was a tough ride for Sauber after they finished ninth in the Constructors' Championship, with the Finn turning his attention to next year's completely new car. Having joined the team for the 2022 campaign amid the new technical regulations, Bottas made a promising start to life with Alfa Romeo, as he finished in the top 10 seven times in the first nine races. However, the results dropped off with Bottas only scoring points finishes in two of the remaining 13 events. They wound up sixth in the championship but struggled to emulate that in 2023 where they dropped to ninth. Bottas himself finished 15th in the Drivers' Championship in 2023, scoring just 10 points as opposed to the 49 he scored in 2022 where he ended up 10th. His season's best results came in Bahrain and Qatar, where he finished 8th and speaking last month, Bottas revealed which was the highlight of his year. Qatar? All I can remember that it was hot, joked Bottas. I don't even know where I finished, so the highlights? I think sadly, I would say that the very first race of the season, we had a solid weekend, scored immediately, everything was looking quite good. But then it's been a tough ride, there's been a few occasions we've scored but not enough times. So I'm definitely waiting for more highlights next year with a new car. The team's main issue in 2023 wasn't that they didn't upgrade the car, the upgrades they bought just weren't that good. An issue suffered by a number of teams throughout the year. Alongside teammate Zhou Guan Yu, who needs to really improve in 2024 to retain his seat at the team, Valtteri wasn't ever really in a position to fight for points. Next year though, that will hopefully all change. Like a number of other teams, Sauber have realized that the reason they aren't able to improve their performance as much as they would like is that their overarching concept of their car just isn't good enough. Mercedes and Ferrari have also admitted the same thing, so it isn't just the smaller teams that have made massive mistakes with the new regulations. Bottas says the team realized that it had reached the end of the line with its 2023 car and that an all-new approach was needed as a revised design team started to gel under technical director James Key. I'm glad that it's over now, said the Finn of the past season. And next year, everyone starts from zero again. There's been many, many changes in the team lately, and I think positive changes. The concept of next year's car looks interesting, so in that sense, I do have hopes. But now we need to work hard for that and try again. The main thing is that we need a new car, and it needs to be different. So that's, I would say, the biggest take we take from this year. Clearly, we've hit the end with this car's development, we just haven't been able to find anything big. So the whole concept needs to be different, that's what we've learned. From what I've seen, I'm happy, because there are differences. I think that's what we need, so many question marks, it's still early days. But at least we're seeing progress, and the last few weeks have actually been quite productive at the factory. With new technical director James Key, the Sauber team will be eager to end on a high note before the Audi takeover is completed in 2026. With a brand new car built on a brand new chassis, hopefully the team can be competitive again, even if their new name is a disappointment. What do you think of Sauber's new name? And do you think they can turn things around for 2024? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.